Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Country Fried Lamb Chops with Sawmill Gravy. That's right, today we are cooking up lamb and we are doing full on comfort food style in the form of country fried. Uh, you love country fried steak, I love country fried steak, everybody loves country fried steak. We're gonna do it with lamb today. I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to take a French rack of lamb and pound it out into these little cutlets that we can actually bread, fry inside the yoder, and then top with some sawmill gravy. And it ends up with that little French bone still attached to it, so it's a really cool presentation. First thing we gotta do is break down the lamb. So what we have here is some Frenched rack of lamb that the butcher over at Whole Foods cut into three bone sections for me. Each one of these is going to turn into its own uh, country fried lamb chop. So, what we got to do here is we got to do a little bit of trimming to get it there. So, essentially, we're going to lose these outside bones, keep the inside bone for presentation, and then we'll have this nice thick chop that we can pound out. So, I'm going to come right along the side of our middle bone. Want to work out those outside bones. And then some of that fat that we don't need for the pounding out portion, we'll take that off as well. So really the only meat that we've lost here is just that little bit of meat that's in between the two bones. And there's not a lot of it there. So now we've got one bone, we can pound this out for that country fried application. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of fat down so that this won't stick, it'll move. Um, this is gonna be a pretty easy process. You're gonna use your meat mallet. Uh, you probably want a finer, uh, textured the actual teeth on it there because we want to tenderize this and make all those little nooks and crannies for the uh, for the breading process to attach to. This goes super quick and it's really easy because that lamb is so tender anyway. You're essentially just going to get a single serving little country fried lamb chop out of each one of these and that's all we're going for just should be really thin and have that bit of texture on the surface now these are going to fry up super quick when they're nice and thin like that it's also a really nice thing we're going to need hot oil cold lamb next thing we're going to do is put together our breading process here we're starting with a couple of eggs this is going to be the wet portion these eggs are going to help this buttermilk uh, mixture stick to that lamb, kind of give it a little bit thicker consistency. I'm going to add to that two cups of buttermilk. We're also going to get two tablespoons of our butcher house brine. So this is just a salt, sugar, onion, garlic flavor, kind of concentrated. Again, something we normally use for a brine, but it's gonna punch a lot of flavor into this buttermilk. We're also gonna add two tablespoons of Cattleman's Grill Pit Fire Hot Sauce. Uh, this is a pretty mild, we're, we're mostly here for the vinegar tang and just a little bit of heat. And that's the wet. And actually, we can go ahead and just plop these lamb chops right in here. We'll let those soak. Let's put together the dries. We're going to start with two cups of all-purpose flour and I'm going to add two tablespoons of steak rub. The R butts steak rub. For some reason this always tastes like this specific rub always tastes the best to me in any chicken fried application. You know what, I like it so much, we're gonna add a little bit more. So we season the flour, we've seasoned the buttermilk. That's gonna lead to a properly seasoned country fried chop in the end. These have been soaking in here for about five minutes now and that's plenty of time. It's gonna let some of that excess drip off. 
And then we want to get this fully coated in the seasoned flour. Now I've done uh, I've done these specific ones a couple different ways, these specific chops a couple different ways. Uh, I tried the double dredge where we dip back in and come back to the flour. It's honestly just too much crust to meat ratio. So one time through, looking a little craggy on the surface, but it's fully covered. That's exactly what we're going for. And this recipe obviously can make a lot more of these chops. We're only doing three for the purpose of this video today, but uh, you got plenty of flour and plenty of buttermilk here to go ahead and you know do four, six, eight of these, however many guests you have coming. So at this point, we're just gonna let the lamb sit there and kind of soak in some of that flour. It's gonna tack up even more. In the meantime, we're gonna head over to the grill. We're gonna make our sawmill gravy, and then we'll move that off to the side to go ahead and fry off our country fried lamb. Typically at this point, I would put the lamb into the fridge because I wanna keep it as cold as possible, but we've got refrigerator temps outside in Kansas this week, so I can leave them right here on the table. And today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's currently preheated to 450 degrees. Come in here, I'll show you the setup. We got the door removed from the two-piece diffuser and I'm gonna set my little skillet, my eight inch skillet right over the flame. We're gonna add to that eight ounces of pork sage sausage. It's just store-bought sausage, but you could use your favorite breakfast sausage. The whole thing about sawmill gravy is that you're gonna use some sort of drippings from meat, be it bacon, or sausage, and oftentimes you'll find that meat incorporated into uh, the actual gravy itself. So we're gonna let that get heated up. Now I've got my baffle pulled out to about here. That way I know when I move this off to the side, it's still gonna be getting some heat coming off of uh, the plate underneath. So it'll stay warm, but it won't keep cooking. Sausage is cooked through and getting some nice browning on it. So now not, I'm gonna add just a little bit of butter, a tablespoon to help with the roux, being that this is a fairly lean sausage. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of extra seasoning here. I got the Hardcore Carnivore Amplify, which the number one ingredient in this stuff is chicken base. So what, what we're doing here is we're gonna add about a tablespoon of this chicken base. It's just got huge flavor. It's gonna really increase that, uh, that savoriness of this creamy gravy. Sawmill gravy is a white gravy, uh, but that doesn't mean we can't add some of that chicken flavor in here as well. So that's fully melted. Let's now get our tablespoon of flour in here to create this roux, work as our thickener. To give that about 60 seconds. And then we're gonna add our liquid. So I've got two cups of half and half. I'm not gonna add it all right now. We're gonna start with about a cup and a half. And then as this sits over here off to the right side of the grill, and as we see this kind of thicken up and start to look a little too thick, we can thin it out with a little bit more half and half as needed while it stays warm on the grill. So that right there is about a cup and a half. We'll just let this come up to a simmer and we'll see it start to thicken. And we're gonna slide this off to the side and get to our country fried lamb. It just took a minute or two and you can see how it's really starting to thicken. It's gonna continue to do, the, do that. So before we slide this off to the side, we're gonna add one more ingredient. What every great cream gravy has to have a lot of is black pepper. And you know what else has a lot of black pepper in it? Brisket rub. Not to mention that roasted garlic in the Lone Star Rub. It's gonna add a ton of flavor as well. Let's move this off to the side. And as I said, we can continue to kind of thin it out with the remaining half and half as needed. Now, 12 inch skillet right over the flame. I'm cranking this all the way up to 500 because I want it to just keep feeding pellets. And I'm gonna add roughly a cup of vegetable oil, enough to cover the bottom of the skillet and, you know, just quarter to half inch high. This is a pan fry, so it doesn't need to be too deep. Let's close this while it heats up. 
It's been about five or 10 minutes now. Our oil is up over 400, 425 to 450 range, which seems really high for frying. But the thing is, it's gonna cool off quickly once we get this lamb in here. And this lamb, these lamb chops are so thin that they're gonna cook crazy fast. So we want to start at a high temperature so we get all the color we need, even knowing that in the end, this is gonna be well done. I mean, that's just the way a country fried steak goes. And that's fine, you got all the juiciness that's happening around the frying that's trapping in all that moisture. Oh yeah, that is some thick gravy. I'm gonna thin it out just a little bit. So it's gonna continue to just thicken up as it sits over here. It's only been about a minute and a half here, but look at that beautiful golden brown. That one's a little bit lighter. We can let that go just a little bit longer. There we go. And it will only take, you know, a couple minutes per side to get these done. All right, looking good now. About three to four minutes in. Let's get rid of this dirty rack. We'll put it on a clean one. Let some of that grease drain off of there. All right, so let's go put it all together. Now for plating up, I've uh, boiled off some red potatoes and just put a few tablespoons of butter in here. Skin on, we're gonna do a red, uh, red potato mash here. Add just a little bit of half and half to creamy it up. Need a little bit of salt too, the black garlic salt. No real recipe to this, just, you know, boiled potatoes, a little bit of butter, and a little bit of half and half. A little bit of rustic mash there. Get your lamb chop on top. Get your gravy over the top. There it is. All right, let's dig in and get a taste. It certainly cuts plenty tender. Get a little bit of potato there and some gravy. Mmm. Oh, I freaking love cream gravy. You can't tell that looking at me, I know, but I'm a cream gravy boy. Man, that is good. I mean, it's fully comfort food like just feels like home feels like mama's cooking the lamb i you could probably trick some people into telling them it's beef it's got a little bit of that laminess to it but there's so much other stuff going on this is maybe a good place to start for people who are not huge lamb fans there's everything else Reminds you of classic chicken fried steak. That creamy gravy, the mashed potatoes with it, which I know there's not much of a recipe there, but everybody loves mashed potatoes. That's a lot of creaminess going on. And you match that with the country fried and the crunch and the salt, man, it's all happening. Creamy, salty, crunchy, creamy, creamy again. I'm pretty happy about that. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, so there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.